Hello everybody, my name is Nate. I'm an engineer at Prefect, and in this video, I'll be stepping through what is new and potentially exciting to you about uh, Prefect 3.1, which is the first minor release of Prefect after Prefect 3.0, uh, the big major release. Um, and so specifically what we'll be covering today is the prefect.toml file, which is a way that you can declaratively configure settings that should apply to work that you're running. Um, and so there have been different ways to do this um, that are still totally valid today. Um, so we'll talk about a little bit of the differences between these um, and the order of operations, such like, for example, um, if you just inject an environment variable, that would take precedence over stuff in here. Um, but let's look at an example uh, to ground this. So I'll pull over my code here and we'll see that we have a pretty simple ETL-ish flow um, wherein I load some big data set with some cache policy saying that um, if we get the same inputs um, and our source code hasn't changed, um, then if we see the same inputs, let's just use uh, the result of the work we've already done. Um, and we'll store our cache keys here, but I'm not gonna talk a lot about that. You can read the results docs. Um, but essentially what I'm doing is creating a bunch of big data and then chunking it into a list of data frames. And I wanna process all these data frames and then finally um, do something with it. And the processing is just calculating some stats courtesy of pandas. Um, and then the saving is just uh, creating a table artifact. Um, so essentially we go read some data, we fan out, do a bunch of concurrent work on what we got, and then we push it back somewhere um, to save it. And so looking at this, uh, th th you might have some ideas for what we can configure in terms of settings. For example, you can always tweak the log level to give more verbose logs. But in this case, because we're using dot map, um, we're implicitly using the default task runner to run our work concurrently. And one of the settings that you can tweak in here, um, besides persisting results by default or something like a default storage block where you say like S3, um, S3 bucket test bucket or something like that. Um, you can also configure the number of threads that the task runner has access to as it's making work happen concurrently. So let's say that we have a weak machine and instead of 50 threads, we'll say three. And so now we can go back, run our code, and we should see that only three threads are allowed to run work at the same time. So we can see this visually in the UI um, where it's sort of a staggered waterfall where once one thread is done working, it can pass off work to the next thread, but ultimately there's only three threads to do all this work um, on the, the processing part after we load our big data set and on our way to building this um, table artifact. So let's say that we have a normal machine. Um, using 50 threads in a normal context is pretty, pretty normal. Um, so, so let's go ahead and run this again with a more normal value. Um, and we'll see that we'll have a, a much more, uh, or we should have a much more vertical line here. Um, let's see, did I click on the wrong thing? Runs, analyze data set, there we go. Yep, we have a nice big vertical line because we had 50 groups in my fake data and we had 50 threads. So we have enough threads to accommodate all the concurrent work we're trying to do. Um, cool, so that's how we can configure our sort of runtime behavior just literally by flipping settings um, in a file. And then we can commit uh, this prefect.toml file to um, our remote repo, and then we can have the settings right next to the workflow and people can see, okay, I, I see how this setting applies to this work. Um, so that can be useful. Let's, let's touch briefly on uh, the order of how these settings are applied. Um, so for example, I, let's take log level, um, where I've set this to info. Um, there's also a .env file where I could say prefect logging level is critical, which means that you're going to get less output unless you have some critical level logs. Um, and then finally, um, I could say prefect logging level is debug for the duration of this process. So um, just to draw, just to make it more clear, we, we have this uh, prefect.toml file, which is which takes effect, but then you have the dot, um, the dot .env that takes effect next. And then after that, you would have um, mvars for the process. So basically 
dot env overrides dot uh, the prefix dot toml and mvars that you inject would override dot env. So this is important to remember um, just to make sure that you have the right setting at the right time. Okay, um, so I think that is roughly uh, all that I wanted to cover. I, I will say one more thing, which is that um, these settings will apply in the same way that I just mentioned, the same order that I just mentioned, if you're just starting a serve process here. So I have this nice little sys args trick um, so that I can run, deploy, or serve um, a flow from the same file. So I'll go ahead and do a serve. So I'll say that. And what we should see um, is that we now create a deployment and it's being served, it's listening for scheduled work and all the settings that I set in um, my prefect.toml file should now apply. Um, so cool. Uh, if I didn't already say this, uh, you get this nice autocomplete, which is very nice. Thank you, Alex, for doing that. Um, but hopefully this was helpful. Um, please feel free to drop any questions in the comments, and I will see you in the next one.